Hello, everybody. We are coming to you at 9.55 p.m. Eastern time with the latest results. It appears now that Donald Trump has handily won the Iowa caucuses with a heated race between Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley for second place. But I think emerging from the story tonight, Crystal, is just the overwhelming dominance of Donald Trump. It's one thing to see a poll. It's a whole other to see voters actually turn out, come to minus 30 35 and brave temperatures huddle up all in order to cast their vote for the former president. We've got reams of exit polling data now that shows just how insane and dominant his support is with every single demographic group. You've got the votes right there in front of us. We've got about 39% of the votes that have been counted so far, but every single projection from the Associated Press to every media organization actually called it not only 30 minutes into the race. In terms of the 44,000 votes that have been cast so far, as if we have, we're have, we literally recording at this moment, Donald Trump stands at 52.8%. Nikki Haley only seeing strength in the richest and most college-educated towns all across of Iowa. Ron DeSantis uh, finishing second, it appears, in every uh, county or so, but not 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 able to actually lead in any and then i guess another sub internet story which we're definitely going to spend a decent time on tomorrow is vivek ramaswamy the the you know the hoped for overperformance given his massive retail politicking and uh, number of events in the state more than anybody else combined didn't appear to uh, to bear out. He's only coming in at around 7.7% so far right now. And of those 50-some thousand votes that I mentioned, he's only got about 3,400 right now to his name, Crystal. So that's where we're at, uh, you know, approximately about 10 p.m. on the East Coast here. Yeah, that's exactly right. So again, this is only 39% of the votes in, so this could change. There continues to be a very close race for second, <laughs> mm-hmm. or whatever that's worth. <laughs> yeah, whatever that means. Um, but yeah, right now, Ron is at 20. Nikki is at 18.7. Sort of hilariously and kind of embarrassingly, too. The New York Times, they always do their like their needle projections, you know, but here there was no real drama around who was going to win. So they did needle projections for second place. (laughs) And uh, right now, earlier in the night, they thought Haley was going to grab the second place um, slot right now at 10 p.m. And this could change again. They have it, quote, tilting DeSantis. They have him based projected to get, um, you know, 57 percent chance of getting second place. Haley, 43 percent chance of getting second place and then the others um, not really rating at all. So that's where things stand right now. And, you know, we're going to dig into a lot of exit polls tomorrow, which were very interesting. You can see I've been shopping for flowers there. (laughs) Spoiler alert. Right. (laughs) Glad it's not anything more embarrassing. (laughs) But um, I want to give you a preview of some of the things that we're going to show you tomorrow also in terms of the exit polls and the way that this broke down. Um, we did see some, you know, some interesting divides, but the bottom line is Trump just basically dominates among almost every Everyone. demographic group. Yeah. So we're looking here at the gender breakdown, Trump, you know, at basically 50% among men and basically 50% among women as well. Um, Nikki doing in this dark red color a little bit better with women than with men, but not that significant. Vivek doing a little bit better with men than with women, also not that significant. You do see some big divides when you start to look at the age breakdown. So pay attention to this group right here. We're going to dig into this more tomorrow, especially with regards to Vivek Ramaswamy, who you can see here in the like mustard color, I guess I would describe this as the younger the voter, the better he did. So with the youngest age group here that they tracked 17 to 29 year olds, he actually got 21% of the vote, which, you know, was uh, equal to what Trump got, uh, according to this entrance poll uh, with young voters. And uh, Ron DeSantis also did better with young voters here. You can see in this like pink color, Nikki Haley kind of consistent across the age groups. Trump, you can see the older the voter, the better he does. So some real clear age divides here, especially uh, with regards to Vivek Ramaswamy, who had more appeal among younger voters than older voters and the exact reverse from Trump. But again, the only demographic group where Trump was even threatened for dominance was among the youngest voters. And oh, look at that. They made up a whopping nine (laughs) percent. 
of yeah. caucus goers. So <laughs> it's not the ideal group to excel with as, you know, other candidates have found out in the past as well. It's just such a, such an important point. And I mean, the main thing, which we, I, look, I want to give Vivek his due. He did do pretty well. Uh, I mean, you know, at least competitively amongst those younger voters, but the vast majority of the people who are voting in these primaries and in the election are old. You know, the boomers are living in a different planet than the rest of us. Their news consumption, I think the vast majority of that is because of media diet. People under 45 are going to get their news from shows like ours or, I don't know, the Ben Shapiro show, the Tim Pool show, whatever, Kyle show, anywhere, podcasts, Joe Rogan. Whereas if you're 55 plus, like you're watching cable and on cable, Vivek is a relative non-entity. It explains some of the pivot in his second GOP debate whenever he was trying to calm boomer fears. And he's like, I know I may seem too ambitious. I may seem too barbed and all of that, but it was just a difficult needle for him to thread. Overall, though, the story again, again, and again is pluralities are going with Trump. Pluralities of non-college educated, of some college, of college of bachelors with Nikki Haley only having a plurality, it appears, with advanced degree mm -hmm. holders, as in people with a JD, MA, MBA. Here's the problem. Uh, if you are a Republican who is winning within that group, I think in the general election, approximately 9% vote Republican. Some 92% are going to end up voting Democrat. So not exactly the subgroup, but really below that crystal also that you're highlighting is the college educated voters. If Trump's got a plurality with college graduates and with non-college graduates, Nikki Haley just never really stood a chance here. And as it appears that her performance tonight in Iowa is not only, you know, roughly either second or third, but not the clear dominance that she needed to show for second coming within the teens of Donald Trump, that's a big problem for her going into New Hampshire. It just undercuts the momentum narrative. It undercuts cuts the you know media attention that she necessarily would have gone and i just think again i got to come back to this trump is whopping with every important group in yeah. the gop primary young old college non-college evangelical you know I mean, it's just like at, at a certain point what are we doing here it confirms yeah. everything that we thought i mean there's a real like wine track beer track yeah. story here but even with that you're like okay but trump exactly. is winning the wine track and the beer track exactly. so right. <laughs> yeah nikki does better with the college graduates and cool. that'll be good yeah. for her in new hampshire right right um we can also we can scroll down here you can also see she does better with people who self-describe as independents but if you are failing with republicans in a Republican primary, something tells me that's not going to work out for you in the long haul. And a uh, uh, last piece of data I'll show you for tonight is you can see the way people self-identify as, um, you know, along the ideological spectrum and who they're supporting. So 51 percent, a majority of caucus goers actually describe themselves as very conservative and they are overwhelmingly with Trump, 60 yeah. percent, only six percent with Nikki Haley. And again, this is a majority of caucus goers. Mm -hmm. You can see Ron DeSantis actually does better with the most conservative voters. And then, you know, his support trails off as voters self-identify as more moderate with Nikki. She does her best among this 10 percent of the caucus goers who self-describe as moderate. Somewhat conservative is 38%. So between, uh, Sagar, it's late for me to do math, but mm -hmm. I believe 50 plus 30 is 80, 80. and then 8 plus 1 is 9. So we're yeah. talking about 89% of the caucus goers are either very or somewhat conservative, and Nikki Haley is not doing particularly well with them. And then this also is worth noting. You can see both here. Self-identified Democrats only made up 3%. There was some, you know, theory that maybe Democrats were going to cross over in large numbers. That obviously didn't happen. Self-described liberals only make up 2%. Again, there was some theory that maybe people were going to cross over to cast a vote basically against Trump since Democrats were not going to have a caucus. That clearly did not work out for Nikki Haley tonight. Again, the race for second place is still very close. We'll see what happens. We'll see if Ron DeSantis feels like this is enough for him to continue in this race or whether he decides because he really did stake so much on Iowa and spend so much money, $150 million or something crazy 
on Iowa to come in maybe barely second place. Does he feel like he has a path to continue? I know Nikki's going to go on to New Hampshire because she feels like she has a real shot there. But after that, where's after that, where's the ground that you're going to yeah. pick up? Where are the games that you're, where else are you going to win other than maybe New Hampshire, which by the way, you're still down in the polls um, in New Hampshire, even as you're doing better there than you've been doing in Iowa. Big decisions for RDS to make tonight. Uh, we'll see. I think he will likely carry on, but there's, I look Trump. He's in the best possible position. Nikki Haley's not going to get the momentum pop that she wanted. He's got the dominance amongst every single group. He's got the headline. He will be speaking crystal in about 20 minutes. We'll probably, maybe we'll monitor and we'll see if anything is worth including in the main show tomorrow, but we'll have a, yeah. uh, you know, Ryan and Emily at the desk and we'll all go over. I'm especially interested to dig down into uh, some of the evangelical flip from 2016 to Trump and just mm -hmm. going through sector by sector and just being like, let's revel in this because this is incredible. You know, Trump's complete dominance within the party, what this means going forward, and also just adjusting, you know, how and what we think about the general election, how soon Biden is very soon going to not even, you know, is going to totally dismiss the idea that he's not going to run against everyone else. And it just becomes uh, closer and closer to reality that, you know, the race that nobody wanted necessarily is the race that almost certainly mm -hmm. everybody is going to be getting so yeah there we go absolutely and so far the drama in this election season is yeah, unlikely to come in the primary season absolutely <laughs> i mean listen this is all interesting right but in yeah. terms of being uncertain who the eventual who was eventually going to prevail it's hasn't you know there hasn't really been any uncertainty for quite some time now so Agreed. um perhaps there will be some i'm sure there will be some drama down the road that we can't even yeah. predict at this point just who the hell knows what's going to happen maybe we go to bed and vivek ramaswamy can become second it's not going to happen i'm, I'm just joking <laughs> i'm just hoping that you know for something like that just again like i said it's sad to see the retail politics doesn't matter that's another thing we're going to talk a lot about tomorrow uh but thank you and shout out to all of our premium members uh, breakingpoints.com you guys we stayed up late for you we'll be up very early for you our whole crew everybody's working overtime and all of that on a tight schedule it is what it is we do it because we love you and because you support our work especially those of you signing up for the election breakingpoints.com we've got an election special going on right now otherwise we'll see you all in the morning